Welcome back, my fellow YouTubers. I haven't really done anything much, uh, done much to this motor, um, but I wanted to do some maintenance. Forgive me, she is dirty right now. But with Snyder pretty much repainted and everything done exterior wise, including updated side mirrors they look gorgeous obviously they'll look better when i when i get this vehicle washed obviously the souvenir spoiler new badges to complement the black paint everything redone i've ordered a new set of these post pillar trim the c pillar trims because they're old i plasti dipped them yes i know probably should have not plasti dipped them but anyway they were old they were sun faded one is damaged and they're not as stuck because of the the black the, the, the plastic uh, attachments or brackets are pretty much old they're they're breaking they're cracking so they don't hold so i had to order a new set and i ordered a new uh this uh, window top trim as well it's kind of covered with a vinyl uh that's just temporary it's already sun faded and i know a lot of slk owners um have this, uh, experienced this or some that are being sold this is all faded you see the chrome all the rubber is pretty much already degraded due to the heat it's already done for but i ordered a new one of those so today i'm just gonna go through the process of reconditioning this engine and there's uh, three main components that i need to address one being this pump which i need to replace this is mainly for emissions i need to do all 16 spark plugs for this motor and I'm going to do um, the entire serpentine kit, which is going to be the Eiler pulley, the full tensioner, and new belt. Now, as you can see, I have pretty much everything on the table. Literally everything on the table. All 16 spark plugs, a brand new vacuum pump, new serpentine belts. I got the full tensioner assembly and a new Eiler pulley with cap. And obviously I have uh, pretty much the electric grease for the for the boots and the spark plugs a little coating goes a long way a little a little bit of care and I'm also going to be treating the mass airflow sensor just a nice little cleaning I do this pretty much every oil change it's not really as necessary but it's an added benefit keeps your mass air, air sensor clean and obviously keeps it at optimal range so when it's uh, the best out of that mass sensor as far as readings go not step by step but I'm gonna go right through it Let's go ahead and begin now taking this out is not too difficult it's mainly held by the hose the harness and obviously three bolts um, three bolts are pretty much easy to get to they're t30 uh, bolts I already got I already loosened the first two but I'm gonna show you how I pretty much took them out because it is a little tricky especially one here on the bottom now in most cases they they, they say that you have to remove this valve for emissions but it's that's not the case this is what i'm using a t30 a bit and an eight millimeter wrench with a built-in ratchet helps a lot especially in tight in tight spaces now I used it to loosen the first top two the bottom one is a little tricky because of the location and you can see it right there at the bottom that little bugger down there so what i did was i loosened the top two doing so gives you a little bit more angle room. You can lift this up just a little bit to angle the bolt just enough to slip this on with this still into place. It won't go all the way in, but it'll be snug enough where it'll grip it. And you'll be able to torque it, I mean, un unloosen it from right here. These are not really torqued down too, too hard. They're, I, to me, they're honestly like what, two uh, newton meters at most, or probably even four, even less than that but they take very little force to remove. So when you're tightening them, they don't require that much either. And once you loosen it, you can do the rest by hand. And I already loosened the bottom one, so I'm just gonna go down there and use this and just loosen it up as much as possible to a point where I can get my fingers down there and just roll it off.
pretty much once you remove all three of those bolts, you're going to notice you have hardly any room to get this out. Now you have two options. You can try to take off the bracket, which is this piece right here, which is held by four bolts. Four, um, I think they're E12s bolts. One, two, and three, four is right there. You can see them poking their heads out. To me, that's going to be a little too troublesome. So you don't want to do that. What I went ahead and did is I loosened this sensor. As you can see, I already removed the bolt for it. It's held right there in place. Move that out of the way. And it gives you a little bit more room, but not enough. So the next step is the it's held by just one bolt. And I believe it is an E12, which is right down there. You're going to have to pop, obviously, this off, which is not hard to do. Move this uh, harness out of the way and this other harness out of the way. And you should see it right there. All you got to do is loosen it. Be very careful. There is a gasket in between the actual valve and the fitting on top of the head. So that's on the head. So you got to be careful not to misplace that, uh, that gasket. Now I took the bolts out that held this in place. And if you notice, I lifted it a little bit and I pivoted it to the side this way. Once I did that, I was able to take this puppy out. So that's pretty much it. That's all you really have to do to replace this and you can see it's slightly out of place right there just got to push it back and it's back in place now the gasket underneath is what I don't want to damage so I'm actually gonna take this off completely to inspect it to make sure it's good because I don't want to have any leaks there you go and you'll see the gasket right down there and you can see this is all dirty. I'm actually going to give this a little cleaning. And here's your gasket. Good. Just a little dirty. It's not damaged in any way. Which is pretty good. But I'm going to give this a good cleaning. Uh, I have my little shop vac here, my little vacuum that I'm using just to suck in, su uh, suck in any of the contaminants that were built up because when I lifted it up, it was a cake layer. And as soon as I put that vac in there, it sucked it right off. That's what she said. Got to plug this back in, which I already did, and I got to put this valve back. I already cleaned it up a little bit, and I already cleaned the hole like I mentioned before. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in, make sure the gasket's all nice and good, plug it in, and then we're going to start the vehicle. And we're going to check for the code, erase it, and let's see what happens. All right, so now we're inside the vehicle and I'm using my $150 scanner, pretty cheap scanner, but it's very useful. And we're gonna log in to this platform and see if I can see the code before I erase it. So I can show you guys, hopefully, I didn't erase it so you guys can see exactly what I would see before. Obviously, besides the check engine light, I'm going to see a generic code, which I believe was 407, P0407. I don't remember exactly, but we'll find out right now. Give it a second as it scans through everything, because I am going to check the transmission as well. There you go. And I believe it was this one. No. There you go. I always get those two confused, even though one says ECM. There it is. Secondary air injection P0410. Yeah, this is the one that I had. And it's the same code over and over. 
and fault indicator lamps obviously going to be your check engine light. So these are the stored codes, obviously. And there's all three of them. Perfect. So let's clear. Because we got a new pump in. So I'm going to see if this comes up again. Good. Let me just check a couple of things real quick. Yeah, perfect transmission's good because I did drive it for a while. I did have some kind of semi-rush rough shifting, but I need to just do a um, adaptive learning, uh, reset the adaptive learning so I can reteach the transmissions. It's just been sitting and they've just been driving it from one section to the parking lot to another. It hasn't really been shifting through all its gears, but other than that, it's pretty healthy. Same for the motor. Now for the airbags, I'm getting an indicator on that, mainly because all the seat component switches, buckles, everything, because uh, um, I took off all the, the, well, the passenger seat's still missing. So all the harnesses, the airbag, everything is down there. Plus I disconnected the main seat. So obviously I'm gonna get a SRS warning. I'm gonna reset that once I get everything in. But for the most part, let's give it a good start. And no check engine light. Yeah, I know. Yep, I know. Cool. So, oh, oh, overall a good start. I still need to drive this vehicle just to make be for sure. So once I get everything situated, I'll be able to know if this is all set. Um, I probably will be able to take it for a drive after I do the spark plugs. I'm gonna do the spark plugs next. So, uh, and then the belts and the pulley itself, tension of pulley is also, before I take it for a drive and we'll find out if that indicator lamp comes on. Hopefully not, um, because a check engine light bothers the hell out of me, especially that red one over there, but I know why that one's on. So yeah, other than that, that's how you pretty much change your emission pump and that's, if you have that P0410, obviously that's gonna be your issue.